that moment, he told me he found God. Uh -huh. And it turns out the God, he's a squirrel. Yeah, big old meaty one. I found God, he used to say. While <laughs> sitting and basking in the, the glory and the sublimity of mercy, I shot and ate that son of a bitch. Hello and welcome to the very first episode in my Best Characters of the 2010 series. I'm glad to have you here. I ended up seeing The Revenant opening night, and the first time I heard that monologue given by Tom Hardy, I was a little bit confused as to what it meant, but for some reason, it did impact me. And then at the end of the year, I believe it was Entertainment Magazine, they put out a Top 10 Movie Monologues of 2015, and they ended up putting that quote-unquote squirrel speech, I believe they called it, as the second best monologue of the year. And once I realized that I wasn't the only one who felt impacted by that speech and felt the weight of it, I decided to rewatch the movie and think more about what it meant. And then, of course, you come to realize how important it is to the story as a whole. Now, I will get back to that monologue given by John Fitzgerald, but when talking in regards to his character, there's no better place to start than the very beginning because during that opening attack, which is beautifully filmed by in Yuritu and Emmanuel Lubetsky, we get to learn a lot about his character, and we don't actually necessarily need to dislike him at the very beginning because he does some pretty badass stuff, which I'm gonna show you. Grab the pail! Come on, grab the pail! Awesome about that character introduction is we're rooting for the people to get to the boats and get away. In fact, Leonardo DiCaprio, who's the protagonist of the movie, is trying to get away. So, you know, kind of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So we're cheering for Tom Hardy, John Fitzgerald, to kick ass and get back to his boat, which he does, and it's pretty savage. But we also learn, of course, when Leo is running away, he's telling everybody, get back to the boats, that's my, that's my horrible impression. But John Fitzgerald, on the other hand, is saying grab the pelt, so you get that immediate John Fitzgerald's a little bit more into himself than um, Hugh Glass, who's a bit more on the side of the entire company and getting people to safety. Although we do see John Fitzgerald antagonize Hugh Glass a lot, and he's kind of an asshole, but there's probably a lot of assholes in that company. The thing that makes John Fitzgerald special as a villain, as a character, is a lot of his actions are relatively justifiable. In fact, Tom Hardy himself has said he doesn't really see too much of a difference between Hugh Glass and John Fitzgerald when you look at the story in a black and white lens. Yeah, yeah totally. I, I don't think he was that not nice, to be fair. Um, to be honest, I think he was pragmatic in a situation which was very tough. You know? I can't see the difference, really, in black and white between Hugh Glass and Fitzgerald and if they were in different situations, whether he would behave in, a, in the same way. Because in a, when it comes to survival, you know, you'd do absolutely anything to survive. This isn't to say John Fitzgerald is an angel per se. I mean, burying people alive and killing that same person's son is not good behavior. But if you look at through the lens of the entire movie as a whole, you have to understand that the environment they're in, which is... I believe 18th century America, it's a very, very unforgiving place, and it pays to be a little bit more morally malleable, to sort of use your own rules and be a bit more vicious. Choose to be the wolf instead of the sheep. And if you watch the movie again, you kind of see Domino Gleason's character, who's leading their company, is a bit of a sheep. So I understand Fitzgerald pushing back against that to a certain extent. Probably the best way to describe Fitzgerald as a character is not an evil man, you know, he's not Thanos trying to kill half the universe, he's just a narcissist who really wants to survive and get the reward for all the work he's put in over the last couple years. 
Again, that doesn't free him of the judgment he deserves for some of his decisions. But when he finally decides to try and kill Glass, he makes a little bit of a statement to Glass. And when you watch it, you really understand where he's coming from. And that's what I think makes that character so great and so watchable, along with Tom Hardy's incredible performance. You hung tough. That's something. I'm begging you, Glass. Them Bree, they're so close now I can smell them. I don't know you can smell them too, and you gotta think. You gotta think of your boy. All right, because you're gonna kill him. You'll kill all of us. <laughs> I can muzzle you if you like. Take away the up from real quick and easy. One ever has to know that you give up. I do that. Fitzgerald killing Hawk basically ends the first act of the movie, and during the second act, we see Tom Hardy haul Will Poulter along for like an hour, I would say. Which, for the record, Will Poulter does a pretty good job in The Revenant. Much better than Domino Gleason, I would say. I'm going to refrain from getting on a tangent on Domino Gleason, but. They have a really cool scene together, and it's not the squirrel scene, which I will get into in a moment, but it's a scene when Will Poulter accuses Tom Hardy of lying to get them away from Glass, and John Fitzgerald, who is, of course, a lot more skilled and more physically powerful, just rips the musket out of his hands after Will Poulter had been pointing at him, and he says to him, Hey man, I got you out of that terrible situation with Glass. I already saved you once at the beginning of the movie. Why the hell are you trying to kill me? And he's got a point to it. And then he decides to kill him, which is, you know, kind of bad. But when the gun doesn't go off, an evil man would try to, like, beat the hell out of him and move on. But Tom Hardy, John Fitzgerald is just like, huh, the gun didn't go off. Shit. Well, let's get going, kid. And then they just keep going. And it's amazing. The squirrel monologue tells us basically everything we need to know about the Revenant and the story in general. And I think it's really interesting that and you read to decide that it's Fitzgerald to frame the whole movie in a speech instead of Hugh Glass. Part of that could be the fact that Hugh Glass could barely speak and he's half dead through the entire film. But Tom Hardy delivers it in a perfect way. Now what the monologue is telling us is that the urge to survive, the urge to eat, and the natural human instincts are so powerful that you'll betray the transcendent beliefs in this situation. It's a squirrel who he believes is a supernatural god-like creation, basically. And it reminded me of 1984 a lot, basically the idea that you'll betray your deeper beliefs in favor of physical relief and, and pleasure. And I think that was really interesting, but it shows it's basically a prophecy of his death because Hugh Glass fights everything to survive and get revenge on him. And again, the whole movie is about survival. In this speech, beautiful speech, frames everything extremely well. We don't see too much about Fitzgerald's character following that scene, but when he gets back to the fort, there is one part where everyone's partying in this pub, having a great time, enjoying life, and then there's Fitzgerald in the corner, Tom Hardy just stone cold, intense. Just that one guy, there's always that one guy, and that's John Fitzgerald. He's this very self serving, arrogant, Thinks he's above everything. And it was a really hilarious scene, actually. And then he ends up escaping, stealing money, going off. Kills Domino Gleason's character, thank God. I was kind of rooting for that to happen. And then his character concludes on a very interesting note with the fight with Hugh Glass. During the fight, Fitzgerald makes one last plea to prove his point to Glass, saying he had to do it. He tried to save him. Which, again, we already knew this, but it was kind of interesting to hear. But the final thing about his character, which I thought makes him really unique, is when he's on the verge of death, when when Hugh Glass is on top of him, he's about to kill him. Now some people, especially for someone as arrogant and self-serving as Fitzgerald, he didn't try to talk himself out of the situation. He accepted it, like a man, and he said, I hope you enjoy this, Glass, because you're not getting your boy back. Came all this way just for your revenge, Hawker. Will you enjoy it, class? Because there ain't nothing gonna bring your boy back. That's a villain. That's a real antagonist right there. And Tom Hardy kills it. One of the best villains of the decade. One of the best characters of the decade. 
and I hope going forward he gets a little bit more recognition. He got nominated for an Oscar, but he didn't win. He should have won, but again, phenomenal. Love watching it every time it's on TV. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun making it. I love talking about characters. And if you enjoyed it yourself, please subscribe and leave a like. I will be making more videos of this nature going forward. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And hopefully I will talk to you soon. Have a good one.